Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarber. This is AP Physics Mechanics C. Today's topic is gravitational potential energy. The objectives are know gravity is a conservative force, know the condition of escaping gravity, understand how gravitational potential energy is related to R, and understand gravitational potential energy is a shared property. Be able to derive gravitational potential energy and be able to sketch the graph of gravitational potential energy versus distance and be able to apply energy conservation concept to determine the unknown quantities. Let's review work done by gravity and the gravitational potential energy near Earth's surface. We know near Earth's surface, gravity is constant. When an object is moved from position 1 to position 2, the work done by gravity is the force of gravity times the displacement. So you can uh, distribute, you get mgy1 minus mgy2. What is mgy? mgy is defined as potential energy. So in that case, on the surface of the Earth, when y equals to zero, gravity, gravitational potential energy is determined to be zero. Now we can substitute uh, into that equation. So work done by gravitational force equals to the potential energy at one minus potential energy at two. And this is really the negative change of a potential energy. So let's take a look at this graph. So this is true because when an object is falling, work done by gravity is positive. But as a result, potential energy decreases. So change of uh, potential energy is less than zero. So W, work done by gravity, and the change in potential energy always have a negative sign. This is true also when you lift it up. When you lift an object up, the work done by gravity is negative, but potential energy increases, so change U is greater than zero. So this is true, this relationship is true regardless if the body is moving up or down. Let's take a look at gravitational potential energy generalization. To determine the gravitational potential energy of an object at a height that's way above Earth's surface, we need to calculate work done by gravitational, uh, gravitational force on the object. But pay attention, gravitational force now is not constant, so we have to use integral. Let's suppose the object is moving down toward Earth. The advantage of this is the displacement and the force are in the same direction so we don't need a negative sign in the dot product. Here is Fg. How do I get that? Because Fg equals the gmem over r squared. When you divide by r squared, is the same as multiply uh, r to the negative 2. The reason I change this because we are most familiar with this form of integration. The integral of xn, you have to increase the power by 1 and decrease by, and divide by the new power. So in this case, you increase this negative 2 by 1 becomes negative 1. Then you divide a negative 1. That's why you have a negative here. So you substitute the top value here. Then you minus the same expression with the bottom value of R2. Rewrite this. You have a negative GMEM over R1 because R1 to the negative 1 is division, right? It's divide by R1 minus this. Compare this with the expression gravitational, the work done by gravity is negative change of gravitational potential energy or U1 minus U2. Compare this, U1 equals GME times M over R1 negative and U2 equals negative GMEM over R2. So U expression is just negative GMEM over R. So you know from this equation u equals zero at infinity because anything divided by infinity equals zero. Just be careful not to confuse gravitational force and gravitational potential energy. The force is proportional to one over r squared, while potential energy is proportional to one over r, and it's negative. Uh, that's we can derive. We can use the general equation derive delta u equals mg delta h. So here is on Earth's surface. Here is h above Earth surface, delta u is the difference between the two, and this is a subtract fractions. To subtract the fractions, you have to find common denominator. And when you subtract it, this is the expression you have. We know Re is much, much, much greater than delta h, so the denominator is approximately equals to Re squared. 
So we can say delta u is approximately equals to this. And as you can see, I'm just simply switch the terms, m times this times h. Why do I do this? Because this term has a special meaning that is gravitational acceleration. So delta u equals mg times delta h. So this is the most general term. So gravitational potential energy at anywhere equals g m e times m over r. Gravity is conservative force. This actually means two things. First, the path does matter, right? Only the beginning and end matters. The second thing is total mechanical energy is conserved when gravity is the only force acting on it. And that's a conservation of energy concept. That's a concept we're going to use to solve problems. Let's take a look at a graph, gravitational potential energy graph. So here is gravitational potential energy equals negative gm em over r. This energy is for the system of the Earth and astronaut. So without Earth, the astronaut will not have potential energy. Okay, so let's graph it. On Earth's surface, you have a minimum energy. As you're going away from the Earth, you are becoming less negative. Therefore, you increase this. So note that we have chosen u equals zero at r equals infinity. As the body moves toward Earth, u decreases, become negative, more negative. And uh, uh, object gravitational potential energy is a shared property between the object and Earth. When the object is far, far away from any object by itself, its potential energy cannot be changed. If it cannot be changed, it doesn't have a meaning. So no matter what you do, it can't change it, right? Therefore, only the change of you is meaningful. If there is no change, it has no meaning. Let's take a look at this example. In Jules Verne's 1865 story uh, with this title, Three Men from the Earth to the Moon, Three Men were sent to the moon in a shell fired from a giant cannon sunk in Earth uh, in Florida. You need to find the muzzle speed to shoot the shell straight up to a height above the Earth equals to Earth's radius. So because as soon as the three men were shot out of the cannon, the man is in free fall. The only force is gravity. So we know mechanical energy is constant. We, we know K1 plus U1 equals K2 plus U2. So we know K1 is just one half mv1 squared. As a matter of fact, that's the v1 we need to find out. We know u1 using the general equation for um, gravitational potential energy form. K2 equals zero at the highest point of velocity equals zero. So it's kinetic energy equals zero. And here's u2. We need to use this expression to find v1. To do that, we need to add this term on both sides. And here is this term minus half of that term. So you end it up with half of the whole term, right? So you can find V1. V1 is the square root of GME over RE substitute numbers. This is the answer you have. Next the question is find escape speed. That is the muzzle speed that would allow the shell to escape from Earth completely, neglect resistance. What does escape speed mean? And in this case, simplify the matter, we also neglect Earth rotation and the gravitational pull of the moon. So because it is also only under the influence of gravity, so total mechanical energy is conserved. To escape is to mean at infinity. So U2 equals to zero, K2 is also equals to zero. That means the initial kinetic energy plus the potential energy has to be zero. From here, we can find expression for escape speed, which substitute all the numbers. This is escape speed. As you can see, it's much higher than to just shoot at a two radius above Earth's surface. So from here, actually, we have determined escape speed expression. But you should always know where it's, how it's derived. Okay, let's take a look at uh, check your understanding. Is it possible for a planet to have the same surface gravity as Earth? What's the surface gravity? That means the same value of g on a planet as it on Earth, and yet have greater escape speed. So let's see, what's the escape speed? We use that conservation of energy. We use the condition for escaping. 
then we figure out escape speed. So this is escape speed on Earth, 2 GME over RE. Escape speed for planet P is 2 GMP over RP. But we have to use this condition. They have both G value. What is G? Uh, G value is GME over RE squared. So somehow we have to change this to squared. To change this to squared, we have to multiply RE on both sides. So this becomes 2 g times re that's the escape speed on earth 2g times re escape speed for planet is 2g times rp so is that possible for escape speed for on the planet greater than the escape speed for earth yes if the uh, planet has a greater radius then the escape speed has to be greater okay whoops Let's take a look at uh, what we have learned today. We have no, we have learned gravity is conserved force. This means two things. The path doesn't matter. Also know the total mechanical energy is conserved. We, the condition of escaping means at infinity, the total energy equals to zero. Kinetic equals to zero, so its potential energy equals to zero. How gravitational potential energy relate to R is inversely related to R. And the, the graph, uh, we know it's a shared property, right? Without Earth, the object doesn't have potential energy. The potential energy has no meaning. Be able to derive gravitational potential energy. How did we derive it? We used the inter integral because uh, the force is not constant. You have to use the integral. The sketch, this graph, is below the horizontal axis. And as R increases, it approaches R, so it becomes less negative, approaches to zero. We have to apply energy conservation concept to determine unknown quantities, usually the speed or escape speed. Let's take a look at this example. An object with mass m above Earth's surface, uh, above Earth, with the Earth mass is big M, is dropped from altitude equals to Earth's radius R. At what speed will object impact Earth? So this is conservation of energy. E total is constant. So uh, initially, you'll have only potential energy because you are dropped. Dropped means there's no kinetic energy. And the final, you'll have kinetic and the potential. When you solve this, it's, it's very similar to the example. You have V equals GM over RE. Next example, planet X has a mass M. Radius R and no atmosphere. An object of mass little m is located at distance 2r from the surface. So the total radius actually is 3r. Pay attention to that. Okay, total radius is not 2r, total distance is not 2r, but 3r. The object is released from rest and falls on the surface. What is the speed before it's reached the surface? So it's the same concept using conservation of energy, except to make sure you know to use the distance of 3r. And so V equals 4gm over 3r here. Okay, another example, a small rock is launched straight upward from the surface planet with no atmosphere. You know the initial speed is twice the escape speed VE of the rock from the planet. If the gravitational effect from the other objects are negligible, what is the speed of the rock at very great distance from the planet it will approach? What is that value? Okay, so that's C, conservation of energy. ET is constant at a very great distance, U equals to zero. So the energy would be just kinetic energy. We have to find what V equals to. Initially, it V is 2V. So because we have to do in terms of E, so we have to change this in terms of E. Remember what V equals to? If you don't remember, you have to derive it. So V equals the square root of 2gm over R. So this term, that means you, if you have a square both, equals to this. So this term is 1 half of V squared. So the whole thing simplify the first term. You become 2V squared minus this. And what is this? This is 1 half of V e squared. So this becomes minus one half of E squared equals one half V squared. Substitute that in, 
you'll have v equals square root of three v and that's it for today thanks for watching